in this case, I think you have a little bit of the propaganda on both sides, a bit more on the Ukraine than on the Russian, but that you have to treat it all with a good bit of skepticism would be strange not to. On the other hand, it's not, it's, it's not symmetric. Ukraine, again, is a little country. Russia is an enormous, the, the gap between Russia and Ukraine is as big that way as the one I told you about before between Russia and the United States. So you, you're looking at a colossus fighting a mouse, okay? So forget everything you know. The chances of the mouse winning, very slim. Everybody who pays attention knows that. Okay, the inequality is reduced when the West decides it's going to support this Ukraine. That was decided politically mm, 10 years ago, in 2014. Uh, there was a government, when the Cold War ends, all the Eastern European countries that were allied with Russia, from Poland in the north to Bulgaria in the south, became, quote unquote, fully independent. They were no longer dependent on the Soviet Union, because one day, so all of their governments collapsed and were replaced by more or less right-wing governments. There were some exceptions, but basically it's a story. Um, Ukraine among them. Took a little longer. Ukraine for a while had a leader who was very pro-Russian, openly so. He was overthrown. The Americans were involved in that, as they were in many of these. How important were they? Sometimes a lot, sometimes not so much. Uh, Ukraine quite a bit, but I don't think all of that is all that crucial. The big issue was, would these countries be independent? You know, like Switzerland, like Austria, sort of. Or would they be like the rest of Western Europe? And now here comes the dispute. The Russians claim, and they have good evidence, that they were promised, as part of the whole deal of all of that, that NATO, the anti-Russian organization of Western Europe and America, would not expand eastward. They would not try to bring in all of those countries from Poland and the North, Bulgaria and the South. And the Russians would therefore let Eastern Europe go. Now, you could ask the question, perfectly reasonable. Could the Russians have stopped it in any case? Probably not. So there's a little bit, mm -hmm, you know, okay. But the promises were apparently made by a whole host of American and British uh, pol diplomats, politicians from the very top. And then in the years that followed, remember we're talking about stuff that happens in the early 1990s. In the years that followed, NATO did exactly what the claim is they promised not to do. Poland became part of NATO. They all. The Baltic states, all of them became part of NATO. So if the NATO alliance moved across, and remember what that I keep saying, remember, you're young, maybe that's the wrong word. Those countries, that cordon from Poland in the north to Bulgaria in the south, that's a buffer zone. That, that's a, a group of countries with populations and geography separating Russia from Western Europe. And therefore, no military could come across there without the Russians having ample time and space and distance to protect themselves. And Russia has been invaded, repeated, right? Napoleon invaded Russia, World War I, they invaded Russia, World War II, Hitler invaded Russia. Russia worrying about invasions from Western Europe is a reasonable position for them to have. You may not like it, you may not agree with it, but given their history, wow. So they wanted that. So they're giving that up. Okay, may have happened anyway, but they're giving it up. So they lost that. And Mr. Putin, first it was Yeltsin and a couple of the other clowns they had there that 
Mr. Putin, um, is sitting there trying to be the president of a country, going through unspeakable difficulty. The collapse of their system would have been difficult for everybody, but they were also trying to reconstruct an economy. Very, very difficult. So he discovers he's the president. He's doing a passable job of recrafting an economy, but he looks like a, like a weakling. I mean, all those countries are joining NATO, and he can't do anything. He can't stop it. He, he complains about it. He says, you're violated. We will not let you continue doing this. But it looks for all the world like he's a tin pot dictator telling you, I can't do it. But we did it, and you didn't do shit. Nothing. Um, the last one left was Ukraine. And Ukraine had been more integrated into Russia. The others were more, you know, Poland is its own thing, and Romania is its own thing. Uh, they have, Romania has a, has a Romance language. It doesn't have a Slavic language, stuff like that. Ukraine is just, that's them. You know, if you, were, if you went to the, the most famous restaurant in New York City serving Russian food for the last century, it's been called the, it's still there, the Russian Tea Room. It's on, right next door to Carnegie Hall on 57th Street. Is it good? What? Is it good? If you like Russian food, I don't like, I mean, I'm French. Our standards are very high. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you like Russian food, you can still go there. Okay, the, mo the most, if not the most famous dish, one of the two great dishes is called um, chicken kien. It's a particular way of preparing chicken as was originally done in the Ukrainian city capital of Kiev. That's a Ru that was, the Russian tea room featured that because that's as Russian as it gets, it's just so you understand. So for, the, for them to start saying, as they did, after they took all the other countries, we are now next going to go after Ukraine. And remember, they also tried 10 years ago to get a hold of Georgia, the state of Georgia, where Stalin came from in the south of Russia there. That didn't work either. The Russian army came in and didn't do that. So it was clear that now the Russians were stiffening. You've taken all of that, but you're not going to come in and take what were literally parts of Russia. Georgia was a republic within the USSR, as Ukraine was. In the Russian Revolution, all of these places were given the status of independent republics. That's why it has that name, Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. That's what USSR stands for. So they were much more integral. So now NATO is beginning to disconnect the piece of Russia from the rest of Russia. And Putin says, and he did it several times, we will not let you do that. You can't do it. And if you do it, we, well, remember, he had bullshit that, and you know, it was a cry wolf, you know, he was doing it again. So I understand why the West didn't understand that he meant it. So he, so they, they, 